Lastly, let's look at the relationship between energy and ionic bonds, not only seeing how it takes energy to pull apart crystals, but how energy is released when a crystal forms, um, how it is that an ionic compound is more stable than the ions when they are separate. Okay, so, uh, lattice energy is the change in energy um, for an ionic compound to be separated into a gas. That's a way to kind of think about how much of the energy change comes from the ions coming together in a crystal. And so in other words, if we had um, solid and we had to separate it out into the ions that are gas phase, so they're totally separate, um, that change in energy would be the lattice energy. So what is it that makes an ionic compound stable to begin with? Well, we, we kind of know that positive, positive and negative attract, and so it's stable when positive and negative come close together. But maybe you don't think about, that also means that when positive and negative come close, that is releasing energy as they go to a lower energy state. And so anytime you have positive and negative charges together, that makes it more stable. Um, that contact and of course in an ionic compound it's not just in uh, it's not just a pair it's a lot of them and and they're touching more than one positive to negative but then when you get into 3d you can have a lot of um, touching between the positive and the negative ions and that's what makes it stable this is just a way to kind of break down and look at what it is about that that makes it stable. And so it's kind of just like pretending that you're making the ionic compound starting with the neutral atoms and seeing where it is that it becomes stable. So this is an energy diagram. And on an energy diagram, remember that at the top is um, less stable. High energy is at the top. It's like a book at the top of the shelf something like that. And then down here is on the ground, this is more stable. Okay. And where we're starting is right here, where we have just the neutral atoms. And we're going to look at the steps. We're going to pretend steps. Um, to take those neutral atoms and make them into an ionic compound, the uh, sodium chloride that's down here. And we're going to, the first thing we're going to do is consider the electron transfer. And so in this first step, what we're kind of pretending that we're doing is we're looking at, okay, let's make an ion out of each one. Um, basically, sodium gave an electron to chloride. And we've always kind of been taught that they form these ions because it makes them more stable. But you notice that by forming the ions, they're actually less stable overall, both of them. And that's because, you know, we always say that sodium likes to give up an electron, but actually it doesn't. It's just that it does more than maybe another element, so, so to speak. Most atoms are more stable if they gain an extra electron, which is kind of weird. So um, it's actually because of sodium giving up one that when you put the two of them together, um, this is actually not what makes it favorable. Um, so getting the octet for an ionic compound is not where the stability comes from. But once they're up there in this less stable condition, um, then, and so up here, they're like, um, this is like gas. So they're like totally separate. And then we can say, well, what happens if we bring them close to each other? And so what we're doing is we're bringing like one sodium with one chloride and they're touching and see already we're more stable than we were when they were neutral. So it's the coming together of the positive and negative charges that make it more stable. And then lastly, um, remind you that this does not happen. Um, just two pairs coming together. Um, once you, this is like a 3D crystal. Once you go to three dimensions, we have a lot of positive and negative charges coming together. And then this difference, if we consider um, the change in energy from going from a gas 
to the 3D crystal, that total change from the positive and negative, um, that's the negative of the lattice energy. Technically, the lattice energy would be the change. This would be the lattice energy, the change going this way. Um, but anyway, so that's, um, that's why it's the negative of the lattice energy. This is the energy required to pull them apart, and this is the energy released when they come together. And so the take home message from this is that the individual ions up here are actually less stable than we were with the individual atoms that were here. So the stability of an ionic compound does not really come from the ion or the electron transfer as we've tended to think. It come, the stability comes from after the transfer, the positive and negative charges coming together makes it more stable. And lastly, let's talk about um, the properties of ionic compounds. These properties mainly come from the fact that ionic compounds have very strong attractions um, between them. And these attractions, they're not as strong as like within a covalent bond, but um, they are very strong and they hold things together into the solid. In other words, like with a covalent compound like water, There may be attractions from one molecule to another, like hydrogen bonding, um, but the covalent bonds in here are very strong. They're stronger um, than ionic bonds. But again, that does not; these bonds do not hold it together in a solid. Um, if water is going to become a solid, it's these attractions that are hydrogen bonding in the case of water. Um, and those are weaker than ionic bonds. Those attractions are weaker. On an ionic compound, we're talking about full positive and negative charges, and the whole thing, the whole compound has these. So they're really held together well, locked in place. The attraction increases with charge. In other words, if we look at two compounds and consider their charges, which do you think would be more stuck together? Stronger attractions. It's going to be the one with the higher charges. So plus one, uh, plus two and minus two, stronger altogether. So this is why um, these strong attractions are why ionic compounds are generally solids at room conditions. Ionic liquids do exist, but they're very rare. They involve very large um, unusual polyatomic ions with resonance where the charge is really distributed over many, many atoms. But anyway, so they're kind of a novelty, but most of them are solids at room conditions. And as you already know, uh, ionic compounds, if they dissolve in water, they are electrolytes.